It's finally time again for another wonderful edition of Blogavision. So who all likes McDonald's? Everybody in America! So on that note, we begin Blogavision today with their spokesman, Ronald McDonald himself. So a pretty big group of health professionals and parents decided to throw a little uh, retirement shindig for Ronald McDonald. And they're trying to push him into retirement. Now when we say this, we don't mean the guy who plays Ronald McDonald, we mean the character Ronald himself. They want him gone. The funny part is, no one at McDonald's is even invited to the party anyway. So these people believe that Ronald McDonald gives the wrong image of fast food. They think that because he's a clown and he's all happy and jolly and skinny that all the kids are going to want to go and eat McDonald's. Jeez, you think the only bad influence at McDonald's was the Hamburglar, right? What kind of image does he portray? I never knew it was okay to go and steal someone else's hamburgers. Now, how pissed would you be if some bandana-wearing bastard wearing stripes came in and actually took your food off the table? What would you do? And I mean, what's wrong with a happy-go-lucky clown like Ronald McDonald? He is a good image, and as long as they portray safe and healthy ways to manage fast food, then it's no problem at all. He gets a pardon from Blogavision. The only problem is, McDonald's makes you a fat ass! But it's not the clown's fault, that's your fault for going and eating McDonald's all the time. And if people want to complain about kids getting fat, yell at the parents for taking them to McDonald's because obviously they're the ones supplying it to them. Plus, you can't just can like a 50 year tradition of wrong McDonald. Speaking of fast food, our soldiers in Afghanistan just had theirs taken right away from them. That's right, guys. Our troops don't even have the pleasure of experiencing one of their memories from back home. We, these soldiers are putting their lives on, on the line every day to protect us, and we can't even give them a couple little perks, some fast food sandwiches. How cruel is that? On a couple of army bases in Afghanistan, um, our soldiers had places like Burger King, Pizza Hut, TGI Fridays, among a couple other places. Well, these places are all going to be taken away from them now because, according to a commander in the army, it's a war zone and not an amusement park. Last time I checked, Burger King amusement park, not the same. This commander has a serious foot up his butt if he thinks that a couple of burgers are going to slow down an army. Did you hear they actually found Osama Bin Laden? Where at? He was actually doing shots at the TGI Fridays. <laughs> now, seriously, you guys. These men are fighting for our right to have these fast food places, and we can't even reinforce their bravery with a couple of fast food eateries? That is so cruel. You burger biting bastards. So for the first time ever over the last two years, the show Dancing with the Stars finally, finally got more viewers than everyone's favorite American Idol. And I'm happy about this. Now, American Idol was a good show when it first came out. It inspired America to actually start putting forth some effort and expressing our talent and trying to be better ourselves, really. But, you know, it's just the same thing every year. And the final contestants basically sound all the same. It's like, oh, that guy has a good voice, and I'm tired of watching people with a good voice. I don't have a good voice, and I'll never have a voice that good, and I'm really sick of seeing this Cinderella story of this guy that can sing well over and over and over every year. As Clark said, the last couple singers, they all sound the same. More or less, American Idol is nothing more than a popularity contest when we get to the end of it. Ever since that big old bastard Ruben Studder left, it's just been boring. No one cares anymore. But he won back in his season because he was cool. He was a big, fat, black guy with his area code and his t-shirt and everyone thought he was the man. He couldn't even sing. He's, a, he's an okay singer. He'd had no success whatsoever after American Idol, but everyone liked the guy, and that's why he won. That's all it really ever is. Now, Dancing with the Stars, honestly, I don't believe is that much more interesting. It's, once again, it's kind of the same thing over and over again every season. However, it is entertaining to see a variety of celebrities shake their booties. And that's the one thing that sets Dancing with the Stars apart from American Idol. On American Idol, you should have a bunch of random people that you don't know. Just a bunch of nerds that want to go on and sing some songs. Every now and then, you get some entertaining people like William Hung and General Larry Platt with his pants on the ground. 
But with Dancing with the Stars, you know who these people are. They're the celebrities that you know and love already, and they're there for your enjoyment. This season of Dancing with the Stars has celebrities such as Pamela Anderson, Kate Goslin, Aaron Andrews, Chad Ochocinco, and Buzz Aldrin! Well, we know Buzz Aldrin's good at punching people in the face, but can he dance? Judging by his scores the last couple episodes, no. Now, would you ever spend a starting fee of $500 to buy something that you already probably own, only it's an all-grown-up version? No. That's what some douchebags are doing with the new Apple iPad. Seriously, you guys? This is an iPod Touch, and this is like the basic outline of an iPod Touch. Now, the iPad is basically... The iPad is basically... Yeah, that. This. <laughs> How much cooler is that? Well, the only problem with the iPad is... Quadrupling the size quadruples the price. Because everybody knows that size matters. The promo for this product is a magical and revolutionary project at an unbelievable price. Just four times as much as the same thing. Yeah! Woo! So if you don't already have an iPod Touch, the features, you can put pictures on it, you can put videos on it, obviously put your music on it because it's an iPod, you can download games and apps, now what does the iPad have to make this even better and improve on the iPod Touch? Nothing! Exactly! The iPad is a huge monstrosity. And the apps are wicked expensive. The apps on this thing are cheap. I mean, there might be a $1 or $2 app, and I've seen a couple of $15 apps before, maybe a $10 app, but the starting price for most of the apps on the iPad are $15. That is ridiculous. For an app. Now the other problem I have with this, the other big problem, iPod Touch is very handy and convenient. You can carry it in your pocket, take it anywhere with you. Good luck fitting the iPad in your pocket, you business bastard. So if you haven't realized, today's show is brought to you by the word bastard. It's not really bad enough to bleep out, so that's why we use it abundantly. Live from Blogavision Studios, I'm Clark. I'm Jordan. And this is Bastard Vision.